Hello YouTube friends and bird lovers! In this video I would like to show you my latest experiments with object detection classification using machine learning and AI. In a previous video I showed you some fancy stuff and some accelerated chips etc that I use professionally in my daily work. Today I would like to show you a wonderful and easy to use opportunity provided by Microsoft. It's a software called Lobe. It's free, available on the web. It's super simple to use. Just click, drag and drop your images. So what you need is a set of images of the objects you want to classify. So I'll walk you through that and, and also show you some, yeah, some classical issues that will come up quite quick and that you might not necessarily think of at your, when you pro, when you sort of preparing all this at your desk. So uh, stay with me and I'll show you some simple AI for everyone. So this is what my setup for image capture looks like. Uh, I'm planning to have something similar like this on the bird box when I when I implement this, like a, a bowl or a, a small hole or something where the objects are supposed to be uh, put and uh, so that's why I'm training to planning, I'm preparing the training images from a similar setup. So that way I will collect a lot of images captured here and of bottle caps first, and then I will introduce sort of noise or other stuff to make it e uh, harder for the machine learning algorithm, and that is uh, a classical thing you have to do when you train neural networks. You have to challenge the network because if otherwise it will get away with more or less finding objects of a round shape with some some notches on the edge and this, this uh, cigarette butt might come up with more or less a, a two color object detector rather than looking carefully into the details. So that's why it's it's worth a lot to challenge the network with with uh, more or less noise. A typical thing here is that we also have to train for for nothing for I mean we want to let's say we want to capture bottle caps and we want to classify uh, cigarette butts but then in this case whether it's just the bowl or the the area the system will really try to, to classify this as either a bottle cap or a cigarette butt. So that's why we need a, a third group of objects like empty bowl. So I'm going to call this empty bowl and create a lot of a lot of images uh, different in different situations. And then we also have a tricky thing here that is typical maybe you didn't think of from the start. That is what's about that? That is a bottle cap but it's for us it's not good enough because we want it in this specific area uh, assuming that we maybe might open some lid below uh, when we when we accept this as a bottle cap so we open a, a lid or we make some other arrangement to get away with this bottle cap and pay the reward for the birds and then make the area ready for another delivery so to speak but that is not good enough because we can't open the hole and get away with a bottle cap. Now this is a classical issue uh, and unfortunately this software in the current version it can't really it can it can classify objects that is saying that there is an object of a certain type in the image. Uh, then we have object detection I think we should call it that is when it can it can tell you there is a bottle cap and the bottle cap is situated in this X, Y coordinates. That would be good because then we could see there is a bottle cap and maybe start the camera to to log what the bird is doing and then but it's not good enough it has to be in this specified area. So maybe talking to you now I realize that maybe it would be easier to have this area as a square because that would be an easier X, Y definition. I don't know right now but you see you instantly come up with a lot of a lot of stuff. And, and this, would that be a bottle cap or a cigarette butt? That should of course be a bottle cap. And what about that? How do we handle that? So we need to set up 
uh, a certain amount of classes so we can cope with a lot of different alternatives or, or uh, outcome. So this is the Lobe software as it will look when you have installed it. You will find it at lobe.ai and it's a Microsoft initiative. It is uh, almost, um, uh, it's so simple and it's really bringing AI machine learning down to to people on the street. And there are some advanced features too. However, uh, it's very self-explanatory, -exp so I don't really have to teach you this. But still, I would like to show you what I've done as an example. So, but first, let's go for a new uh, project. So what you do is you feed the system with, with images of your objects, and you have to add a label to the object. And you could do that in basically in three ways. You could just drag and drop images on this area and label them. You could capture them from your camera, your, your webcam. And in the latest version of this software, you can actually pick and choose from different cameras. So you could have a, an external camera. I tried that, but for some reason I had a lot of latency and it wasn't really working that smooth that I wanted. So I used the third alternative, that is you just capture images and you put them in folders with appropriate labels or names at the folders. And then when you import them, all the images will, will be <coughs> tagged with the correct label. Uh, so but just to give you an idea, uh, you could have like a set of images see if I could show you them there and then so these are some images that I've been using and you just drag and drop them and then you have to add label oh this was a tricky one but let's go for but this is what I talked about before should we also create a, a certain class for cigarettes and butts within the bowl I didn't go that far in this example but uh, I'll show you later and that, uh, then that image will be introduced to the system. And the minimum for a simple example is five images of each class. Uh, but I'll kill this now and open up an example I made earlier instead. So we, with the same method, or actually the import method, I, I've captured these images of uh, cigarette butts as well as bottle caps, and then also the empty class for, and this is interesting because you see I've been quite challenging here with, with an empty bowl, but a lot of, of uh, caps and cigarette butts in close proximity. Okay, and then uh, I just trained the network, or actually it starts the training sort of image by image when you import them. And now I can go to the play feature. This is where I can add new images. You all, when you train a neural network, it's common practice that you, you separate. If you have 10,000 of images, you would take 10% of that away to have as test images because you want to challenge or you want to test the network with things that the computer haven't seen before. So these to the left are my test images. That, that is images that hasn't been exposed. The network isn't trained from this net, from these images. So I'm stuck with something simple. And it takes a while and you see it classifies that as a cap. Same. And yet again. And then I have a slightly trickier image with some noise but still working. And now the cap is slightly hidden, still working. And then it's an empty image. So no problem so far. And uh, then I we start to challenge it with something close to the bowl. 
So you see, with a really small set of images, I've already created something that might actually be good enough for the bird box classification. And of course, I could come up with solutions later on. Maybe for the bird box, I should mask the image with some traditional image processing and only showing what's in, in this circular area. Or maybe that's not necessary. Or I could put the bowl on something like a, we'll, we'll say it like a tower or a pile. So anything that would be outside the bowl would sort of fall down or maybe into, yeah, fall down to some waste basket or something. But if this works, it's even simpler. So you see, this is a, getting trickier and trickier. And here you can see it's still classifying it as a butt, but this uh, green thing here is indicating that the confidence is slightly lower. It's not that obvious for the system, but still, butt is the best classification idea. And this is also cool. I mean, yeah, this is tough. Uh, and um, yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. And now my plan is to see whether I can go and export this to an, uh, to a Raspberry Pi. And that should be through a TensorFlow model. I can just show you the number of images. So these are all the images that I used, not that many. Some, yeah, that's 78 images in total. And they were captured really quick in my workshop with just a, a remote or a standalone web, web camera. So I really recommend you to, to uh, explore with this if you're interested in neural networks. And then you can dig deeper into uh, network strategies and, and uh, backpropagation and all that all this fancy stuff. Or you don't, you just stay with this and go for more pragmatic stuff like seeing with what you can build with this. So uh, that's what I'm going to do now, uh, export it to Python, and then I'll be back with a new video. Thank you.